All right, guys, so I figured I would show you kind of like a tutorial on how to do this. It's actually very simple, but there is a couple of things that you can mess up. So I thought I would just kind of do a quick run through to show you how to input some stuff and what to do and what not to do to basically keep this in format. So when you look at the screen here, everything's kind of laid out for you. Um, this is pretty much where you put the status of the car. Maybe it's incoming. I find it very important to just ensure that I know what's coming in. When you start getting like a lot of cards, you kind of lose track of what you have and what you don't have. So this is definitely important to kind of keep that status. Um, let's say we bought, we bought a card today. Um, I sent out the morning bins to you guys. So let's just say you picked up uh, one of those Steph Curry's and then you just kind of type it in as usual. I think uh, the uh, 357 was going for $99. And you know, let's just say you pay $6 for taxing or for taxing for tax. As you can see, it's just going to start populating on its own. So whenever you, you know, kind of input this, all you got to do is plug and play. You type in how much you uh, pay for the card and, uh, you know, what kind of tax you paid. And let's just say you pay four fifty for shipping. You paid one hundred and ten bucks and forty nine cent for that card. Now, let's just say you make a mistake or you have an error. It's very important not to touch the this side. If you need to make any changes, you can delete these things. So you don't want to erase this because if you do, it's going to kind of ruin the format. So let's just say uh, you want to change the price, just change it here. Or, you know, let's just say you want to delete the price altogether, just delete it within that category because you don't want to, you know, kind of ruin the format here. If you, if you delete this, then it's not going to auto populate anymore. You know, it's not going to, it's not going to do it. So I mean, you can always get it back. So if you do mess up, you can just kind of drag that down, hit enter and it'll do it for you. But just to kind of save yourself some, you know, sh muscle, sh you know, I don't know. You just don't want to do that, okay? Now, um, outside of that, I mean, everything else is pretty much simple. You know, you might want to put in your target sale here. This is just to kind of gauge, you know, what you were thinking when you bought it, kind of help you figure out some profits. Um, you can also kind of play with this. I think this is really cool. Let's say you bought this card and you sold it at $150 and you charged $5 for shipping and then you paid... Let's just guess and say you pay $15 for eBay fees. Um, you had to pay $3.50 to ship it and PayPal charged you, you know, $4. Well, um, okay, I did, I did this all wrong, sorry. You gotta put these in parentheses to, you know, make them expenses and not um, income. So yeah, we put some parentheses in here and that, that shows you that at $4 and, uh, you know, that shows you you made 23 bucks. So if you bought this card at 109 and you factored in fees and shipping and all that stuff, you know, you would get $23. I think that's very important to kind of play with just because in your mind, you're like, I bought it at 109, I sold it at 150, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make $40. And it's like, no, you're gonna make 23. So you can kind of play around with this, you know, before you buy a car to see if it's really worth it. You know, if you bought this card at, you know, 109 and you wanted to sell it for 125, well then, you know, you would actually lose a dollar ninety nine. So you don't want to do that. Um, and this can kind of really help gauge if it's a good buy or not. So you know, for example, with Ben Simmons or somebody like that, say you pay five hundred dollars for a card. You know, do, if you sell it at six hundred, are you going to profit? Probably not. When you kind of factor in fees and shipping and all of that stuff. So definitely use this. Uh, you know, to your advantage. Play around with it. As you can see up here, where it says total paid. That's going to give you the total amount of everything that you paid. Um, you know, this is going to give you the total amount of everything that you sold. And this is obviously your net profit. So this is probably always going to be like in the negative unless you sell all your cards. You'll be able to tell your individual profits here. So let's just say you did sell this at, you know, $250. And those are all the fees. The fees were $25 because eBay takes advantage of you. But now you made $113, which puts you at 103% in terms of your profit. So it kind of figures everything out for you. You just got to plug and play. And just be sure not to, uh, you know, alter any of the, you know, total pay or the net profits. Use those, use these other, you know, uh, sales to kind of fill it in for you. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it's really, really simple. I think it's a great little tool. And it's pretty much what I use to stay organized. It's really important to know what you paid, what you didn't pay. Um, you know, when you use this though, it, it is really hard to take a loss. Like when you see everything kind of laid out, just know that sometimes in sports cards, you gotta take a loss. Um, 
And yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think I should add anything to it. The link to download it is below. It's free, no cost. You don't have to sign up for anything. You can just download it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this tool. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Check out the podcast. Sign up for the newsletter. You don't have to, but why not? Anyways, happy investing, guys. And I can't